My name is Benga Adjelore. I'm an economist at the University of Toledo, hence the formal attire. Although for economists, this is actually informal. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank the Alter Conference for having me talk about this very important topic, looking at open data and police reform. And so this has become actually, well, issues of police brutality, use of force, both lethal and non-lethal, have been around for a long time. It's actually become very prevalent because of social media. So you think about groups like Black, Black Lives Matters and um, just the kind of the news that we hear about. And this is kind of similar to the talk that Mickey Kendall had earlier today. So what is open data in policing? So in the law enforcement context, we could think about open data as having public record of all police citizen interactions. So we can think about traffic stops, we can think about stop and frisk, we can think about um, SWAT raids, uh, and even now with body cam, you can look at body cam footage as a form of open data. And so we have you know, small kind of um, examples where there's open data. And so there's a national, uh, the police foundation has the police data initiative, which actually has links to open data of different law enforcement agencies. There's about 130 law enforcement agencies around uh, the country, like San Francisco, Houston, LA, where they have links to these open databases. And so the way the police data initiative works is that it categorizes it by arrests, um, traffic stops, stop and frisk, lethal use of force, community engagement, all different types of aspects. And so what you can do is you can go to the website, click on it, and see examples uh, all across the country. So then the question is, well, how can it be useful in terms of police reform? And so the most difficult thing to ascertain when we talk about racial bias or any sort of bias in policing is trying to figure out, well, what is the reason? And so, you know, when I was making this talk, I was thinking about how people talk about incidents of police violence. And then seeing uh, Mickey Kendall's talk really kind of uh, formalized it for me because she was talking about all the different examples of Tamir Rice, Walter Scott, there's all these examples. And then when the news comes up, people say, oh, well, we don't know what the right reason was or it's context dependent or we don't know. And we were actually just talking after her talk. She was saying she was surprised that people aren't able to put this together to say that race is a factor or bias is a factor. And I was telling her it's not surprising because everyone looks at these as distinct, distinct, discrete events, where it's like, oh, well, that was just that one time, one time, and they just able to look at it that way. And so then this is where open data comes in. And the other thing that also makes me think about when people look at discrete events, I was thinking about our Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, uh, talking about Chicago. Uh, earlier this year, he said for the Justice Department to review all consent decrees. And when people say, well, no, Chicago has a lot of issues, as we all know, he would say, oh, well, that's just anecdotal. These are just stories that we hear. And that's the problem with looking at these one by one. But this is where open data can provide a solution. What you do is you're taking, instead of looking at just discrete events one by one, we're putting all this data together. We're looking at everything together. And we're saying, OK, given all these events, can we find bias in the data? And so some of the work I've done, I have uh, two examples. So one, looking actually at Chicago, Chicago Police Department and citizen complaints. One of the things I wanted to look at, and I have data from 2008 through 2012, and I'm able to look at all the citizen complaints and try to figure out, okay, what can explain this? And so what I find is that African Americans who reside in the South Side are less likely to have their complaints heard or sustained. And the other thing I find is that African American officers are more likely to have their complaints sustained. So instead of looking, so with this, you could say, okay, there's an issue of racial bias with the Chicago Police Department and accountability. It's not, oh, well, there's just that one example or that one example. I have data over uh, 2,000 complaints. And so here's where open data is able to have a solution. Second paper I have was looking at officer-involved shootings. And one of the issues is that we don't have good data on any sort of policing outcomes except for crime. And there's been a lot over the last couple of years through uh, Campaign Zero, The Guardian, The Washington Post have collected data on fatal encounters. And so one of the things I look at is I look at uh, from 2013 to 2015, what are some of the factors that go into officer-involved shootings? And one of the things I find is that not only is race a factor, but signs of mental illness. And that you have you know, African Americans who have signs of mental illness, they're the most likely to be shot. And so, but we can have these, we can do these analyses 
when we have that data available. And that's why this is important. So what are the obstacles? One of the things I talked about with the police data initiative is that we have data on 130 law enforcement agencies, but there are over 11,000 law enforcement agencies. And so the question is, how do we go from 130 to 11,000? And so the key is law enforcement buy-in. Law enforcement is gonna to have to wanna to do that. Those 130 law enforcement agencies, they voluntarily gave access to their data. But a lot of law enforcement agencies are not gonna do that. One of the reasons why is that when we talk about these issues, we always talk about it in terms of problems, in terms of what the police is doing wrong. And I think if we're able to reframe the discussion in terms of let's find solutions, or even better say, okay, what well, is these police agencies that are doing it right, they're doing policing right, well, what is it that they're doing? Well, we need data to figure out what are the things that they're doing right. And so if we frame it in a way of looking at it, okay, we have all these agencies, some of them are doing it well, some of them are not doing it well, let's look at the ones that are doing well, can we apply that to these other agencies? Another concern about having these data sets is the accuracy and validity, validity of that data. So this goes back to the Walter Scott case, where we actually have what the police report says and then what we saw on the cell phone video. How do we get accurate and valid data? Well, this goes back to law enforcement buy-in. If the law enforcement is interested in doing this, they're going to want to have accurate and valid data. And then finally, the most important thing is having nationally represented data. So we have these 130 law enforcement agencies, but these are large cities. What, they, what we know about them is not applicable to small agencies, to rural agencies. And so if we have a nationally represented data, then we can go, again, beyond the stories, beyond the anecdotes, and be able to say, okay, this is true across all the different agencies. These are issues across all the agencies. And because of that, now we can think about solutions towards solving these problems. When we have um, policies that work, we can figure out policies that work. We do that, then we can say, okay, this works all across, then we can have all these agencies at a federal level, at a state level, at a local level, implement these policies so that they can work. And so that's the end of my talk. If you have any questions, I look forward to hearing it. And then I also have some references in terms of uh, issues if you want to interested in learning more about these uh, topics. Thank you.